whai hoki hei tohu mō tātou. E rangaranga nei, nei, nei ngā kōrero o wī o wā te mutu ngai ho ka tūma nō te maunga. Mm. Nō rera, kē rā kā tīmata i te pūtake o te riri, kā e ki te taumata o akāro nui ki te tangata a kō kō wai. Nō rera, he pērā nō tōku akāro ki a koutou i ara mai ai. I tangata mai ai tō tātou rā, i nā nai, tēnei rā, a kai atu ki a kō kō. Nō rera, koina, kua rangatira a waitara i a koutou i tēnei wā. Uh, tuku a tuko tēnei karakia e wakarite atu i tō tātou pō o ti rā kia tere atu ngā kōrero uh, o tēnei anō te pā o te wānau. Nō no, rera kia uru atu tō kuaro a kia koe nā kia uru mai tō uaro a kia au nei. Nā rangi pipene nā rangi aita ko koe me tō kume ngā nuku, ko koe me tō kume ngā rangi, ko koe me tō kume ngā manu iri, ko koe me tō kume ngā taonga. Taonga i te kupu, taonga i te kōrero. Taonga i te maara, taonga i te wānanga. Māori tū, a Māori oho, a Māori ora e kirunga i tēnei minenga, tūturu vaka maua ki a tīna, tīna, kui e, tāi ki e. Tēnā koe rua kere. Been a long day, or la, a long couple of days for I know, but this morning uh, we had the honour, of course, uh, of visiting Te Koia. Uh, at five o'clock this morning, with the lighting of the ceremonial fire, uh, a little bit of rain, but then it cleared up for us, and uh, you know it set the scene for our day. And that brought us back here, or well, to the cenotaph down in Waitara. We went to visit after that. The um, the story shared there around um, Brooks, Lieutenant Brooks, and uh, Hapurona and the corridor around that. Uh, then we returned back here to Owai to prepare for our hikoi. And so we had eight buses, all full, full of uh, our people, our kaumātua kuia, full of uh, all of our whānau uh, ngāiwi o te motu e tai mai nei, full of our kura kaupapa, whare kura, um, who then headed off to the different pa sites uh, today, puke tākauere o nuku kaitara, puke rangiora, mā hoetai. As uh, they left, we had an uh, uh, ope of about 250 tamariki from around different schools that came, uh, that we waka towed, uh, broke up into seven groups, and we did, had rotations, uh, which was uh, just wonderful having our tamariki here and sharing our stories. And then we arrived to this evening uh, here on the Marae Atea, ready to receive our kai kōrero, here and this is a little bit different from last night. If you watch the live feed uh, through Māori TV on Facebook, etc. Uh, today we have, or tonight, this evening, we have our whole kāinga people, our people that have been involved in, uh, in uh, I guess, some of the movers and shakers uh, around uh, what we've achieved as a as a iwi, as a hapu. So we have our first kai kōrero today, and I know she's a little bit nervous, but. Um, before I get to her, I've got one really, really important pānui. And that pānui is uh, just around the chicken pox. So for those that uh, weren't here yesterday, we did let people know that uh, we had a, a, a pōiri on Sunday for, uh, for whānau that arrived, and there were six uh, tamariki that had the chicken pox. Uh, they have since returned back home and uh, we just need to let you know uh, three important messages about that. The first is that, um, firstly, it's a, it's, a, it's a danger to any pregnant woman. So what we'd advise is that you go to see your GP. And that's for all of these, uh, these uh, the risks. The second is that if there are tamariki under 15 months that haven't had their uh, immunisation, that they go to the GP as well. And uh, if you are, your immune system is low, just due to medication or other things, um, that you are also at risk. So important that we go to the GP. There will be a press release. It just has to follow the process. So uh, we're just ensuring that we let people know tonight and just to be aware of that. So uh, with that far note, we're now going to invite our first speaker, uh, for this evening, Ma, Ma, Ma Oturia uh, White uh, of Manukori'i Apu, uh, Waitara Alive. Where does Manukori'i Apu see itself 
moving forward. O mai te paki paki, ara mai koe. Harewa ai te manu kāri area mai te tihi o Taranaki. Tu i te ao, tu i te pō. Rere ki uru, rere ki tai. Whaia te wai ripo ripo, te wai tuku iho. Piki tu, piki rere. Mā turu turu iho nei, ona wai tuku ngā kiri. He peko, he tangata, he peko, he kōrero. Tai nō ki ngā ngutu awa o Waitara. Puaki ai ki tangaro. Tiruhia nei, tiruhia, Tiruhia iho nei ki pika pika whenua i raupatutia e te karauna. He rā tuku pū pauri kere kere ko waitara o te pū. Ko te tangata ki mua, muri iho ko te oni oni. Ka mati te whenua, ka mati te tangata. Ka toro ai te ahi ki ronga ki te whenua. Tā oro atu nei ki taku tai moana. Aue taukiri e. A ka huri te manu ki uta, tai ai te manu kāri area ki runga o te ikaroa a maui. Kia rāhiri mārere, kia tātou, ki te pā tū watawata, te pā whakaruru hau, ki te takapau whāriki o te rangi tāke. Ko manu korehi te papakainga, ko manu korehi te tangata e tūmai nei. Ko au teti i uri wahini o te koki kōrero, o te mahi a te pau koia a manu korehi o manu korehi ko keita. Tūtama wahini i te wā o te kore kore. Ki tātai hoki, ko te raukura te tohu aroha e mihi mai oha atu ki a tātai katoa. I was asked to speak tonight about where Manu Korihi sees itself moving forward. Haere Whakamua Te Tiro Whakamuri. This Whakatauki speaks of our journey being Māori, walking into the future with our eyes opened to the past. Our past, our present, and our future being intrinsically entwined. I am we. We walk together as one with our tūpuna and our mokopuna, a wairua. A tinana. The past is linked to and will shape our future. Our future is linked to and is shaped by our past. There is no separation. The Waitara Land Bill has tested our resolve to walk that journey. It has tested our relationship with our tūpuna, acknowledging and carrying the pain of the past and the relationship with our mokopuna moving into the future, unrestrained and unburdened. It has tested our relationship with our whanaunga, some who believe that all lands be returned, unencumbered, given back, freely, no strings attached. I riro whenua atu me hoki whenua mai. Manukori he have been fighting for house and home for 160 years. So do we wait for another 160 painful years? This is a legacy that we could have left our tamariki mokopuna to carry into the future. In losing the land, we lost our voice, our language, our identity, our lifeblood, our foundation, our place to stand. Through the Waitara Land Bill, Manukorihi Hapu will now have the ability to determine to shape our future and the future of Waitara. It gives us the ability to strengthen our identity in Waitara within our rohe and community, enable our whānau to live in a warm, safe home and environment, connect our uri to their tūranga waiwai, empower our taiohe to pursue their dreams and aspirations, teach them our stories, our songs, our language, nurture and grow our hapū, care for the health and well-being of our whānau and hapū, and sustain and care for our whenua and awa. This will be a long, arduous journey, fought with angst 
obstacles and challenges, but one also filled with hope, courage and resolve, a journey which we are encouraged and determined to progress forward to a positive future for those that follow in our footsteps. We are up for the challenge. We want to forsake the agony of our kuroheke and kuya who were continually stonewalled in every direction. In the words of Auntie Marge, the living dead left to grieve for the taking of the sea, the land, the food and the people. In 1859, our rangatira wrote to Governor Thomas Gore Brown to establish the territorial boundaries that were not for sale to the government. These words have guided and sustained Manukori Yehapu throughout the Waitara Land Bill. In this letter, Tarangi Taki stated, Ko ina finua e kuri e huatu e mato ki a korua ringa ringa kote kawana. Kiriti mato ki ngā manu o te moana e noho ana irunga ite kofatu. Kapari te tai ka ngaro mia tawa kofatu e te moana. Kariri ngā manu no te mea kauri he noho ngā noho anga mōrato. These lands will not be given to us into the governors in your hands least we re resemble the seabirds which perch upon a rock. When the tide flows, the rock is covered by the sea, and the birds take flight, for they have no resting place. Our goal has and always been to, to, to turn the tide. Ka timu te tai, ka kitea taua kofatu, he nohoanga ma mato. He oi, he maru ahi ahi, kei muru, kei muri te maru awatea. He paki a rohe rohe kei mua. After the shades of darkness comes the dusk of dawn, whilst before lies the shimmering glory of a fair day. Nō reira ka tuku mihia angiau atu ki a tātou, ngā maunga, ngā awa, ngā waka. Kua tai a wairua, a tinana, nei ki te tautoko tēnei kaupapa, te pūtaki o te riri, te pūtaki o te maunga rongo ki taranaki. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. A pai, o tēnā koe mā o tūria. He mi i tēnei ki a koutou ko ngā tarati o manu kore i hapū. E whakari tēnei ki a tai, manu iri ki a tai, mātou nei i tēnei o ngā wā. Nō reira i runga i tērā kai te mi i atu ki a koe ki a koutou. So just to acknowledge our manu kore i hapū, our trustees that have allowed and planned over many busy months working bees to make our marae look beautiful for the, the, these few days, um, have come together to uh, welcome all of us here with a lot of the hard work that's gone in the background. And so to, uh, to you, Ma Oturia and other marae of Manukuri i Pā trustees in Hiatu Kiaokoto, you know who you are. I'd like to now introduce Puna Wano Bryant with her corridor. Uh, around healing and reconciliation into the future, and what does this look like? Hanga huanga o rongo. And for those um, those of us who were privileged to be at Parliament last week for the third final reading of uh, Te Hayata o Te Pire, pire, uh, te pire Hayata o Pariaka, uh, a moving day for all of us. Um, for me personally. The time that, uh, that I felt the most uh, saddest was when our, the ministers had all spoken and uh, our kuia at the end did their karanga. And that time for me was, uh, was very, very um, emotional that you could feel the wairua of our tūpuna there in the house with us. And uh, puna has had a lot to do with that process. And puna, a mihi atu ki a koe, nei ra koto tamahine, uh, E rangona nei i a koe, tō kōrero i runga i tēnei wā. A kōrua ki a koe anō e Carlos, nō reire mihi atu ki a kōrua, mihi atu ki a koe puna, hara mai.
Te kori kori tātou, i runga i ngā kupu whakahau o ngā mātua tūpuna. Ko tai te wā ki te whakahi i ngā waiata hau, ko hōna kōrero he tawhito, ko hōna āhua he tika ngā hau, i runga i te auranga wairua. Ko a moi, ko tū kā riri, ko tū kā ngua, a tū kai taua. Ko a aranga ake a tū te iii, tū te wanawana, ko a puta, te hae a te kāwana. He whakamutunga o te tīmatanga, kua tū te pakanga, kua oti te muru me te raupatu. E hara kē kei runga i te whenua, ka iri tonu te raupatu o te whenua. Engari, mo te muru me te raupatu o te wairua, e kao. E kore e mimiti te puna wai heke mai to tātou tau heke maunga taranaki. He mangu mangu taipo nei hoki tātou katoa. Ka tū tonu ki runga i o tātou, tō tātou taranakitanga, ka puta kaura taku i mie. He uri au no ho hepa no ngā tūpuna. I e nei waka tupuranga, ko te whitira wa ko tōu, te kai hāpai o te kīngitanga, o tō mātou tūpuna o ho hepa. Ko te whitira wa ko tōu, te kīngi o te mau ngārongo. Healing and reconciliation. Hia hanga hua o ngorongo. The first part to this question lies with each of us as individuals. What are the hua, the fruits of rongo? We are all on our own journey of self-discovery, identity, wairuatanga, faith, and all of us have an innate desire to be free from pain. And if it's our calling to see others free from pain, I'm a descendant of our tupuna and of the whareo hākopa of Joseph. I am Taranaki Iwi, I am Te Atiawa Ngātiawa, and a follower of Christ. And for the fear of criticism to stand in this place and say that is, um, makes me vulnerable. But I think it's important that I put myself in this space um, at this time and I own my journey. And what is that journey? It's an upward trajectory. I should just use the word journey. It's gonna, that's going to be hard. An upward journey that we are all on towards healing and freedom. And I encourage us all to own our own journey and to love people for where they are at on their journey. Wow, it's the first time I've had an amen. That's pretty cool. Reconciliation, what is it? Healing, how do we achieve it? Te tiriti o waitangi is a spiritual covenant. Our people honoured te mana o te kupu. Before the signing of the treaty in 1814, the first church service on Christmas Day at Oihi, Māori response to the gospel in their haka was kanuku nuku kaneke neke. Make way, create space for the arrival of a new way. 
Our people honoured the power of words and made way for other people's ways, whilst maintaining their own tikanga. This covenant, the treaty, has been breached and broken. One of my mentors, Matua Alastia Reese, said last week that Māori haven't walked away from the treaty. I considered that for the first time and agree that while we haven't trusted it, and still don't, we haven't walked away from it because we can't. Why? Because we are Māori of this earth, of this place. We are indigenous. Our birthright is through hokapapa, a right that we can't opt out of. Those rights have been interrupted, and that interruption has, has caused us immense injury and pain. However, in that injury and pain, there is inspiration, and I believe that is the key to our healing. I am a woman of faith and hope, uh, as a leader, an optimist, after Puanga Hayata in June 2017, I hoped that the upward journey from pain to peace would be swift. Like the event, he Puanga Hayata, momentous, resounding even. Not long after that, I became a realistic optimist. Pain doesn't go away, and neither should we expect it to. Like the loss of loved ones, the grief cycle never ends. We just get better at dealing with it. I'm a person of privilege in this space, I feel, today to be asked to speak with people I love and respect and to have a voice. Puanga hayata kawenata orongo te ture hayata ki parihaka took years of endless struggle to come to and I was here for a mere glimpse of it. And so reconciliation, as I have observed and learned, is in essence not actually a system, a structure, a strategy, a one-off event, or even a process. And as some of the people in this room know, I love those things. <laughs> reconciliation is a way of being, a way of relating to one another with aroha. Love, yes, love. We need to soften our bitter hearts. Out of the condition of your heart, so you are and so your mouth speaks. What is the condition of your heart and what does your mouth speak? This is my view of reconciliation, to put things right and love each other the way our tupuna loved us. People will still ask, yeah, 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 okay, but how do we do that? We have been interrupted and injured and need to be restored because in the absence of healing, how can we be inspired by what our tupuna did and the instructions they left us? The key to this for me is restoration. Te tikanga o te maungarungo. Restoration is a series of intentional, deliberate actions, some of them one-off, some of them repeated. Like maungarungo, our people didn't simply say, I am maungarungo and it happened. It took discipline and a commitment to a new way of doing things using their own tupuna wisdom of their time. Step one to restoration, as I see it. This nation needs to say sorry and mean it. Acknowledge the wrongs it committed and mean it. Saying sorry creates space for the repair of broken relationships. You make a mess and you clean it up. Step two, we need the nation's support to learn the story of the land and tell the stories. What many of you saw today for the first time at Puketa Kaure, Pukerangi Ora, Mahuetahi, you are now responsible for. But sorry, Māori aren't responsible for your healing. That is for you. Yes, it's time for us to reveal, but to heal, you know. We have to re reveal even to our own. And as I looked out on the pa yesterday at the number of people united, our Taranaki people, there are many of us missing, disconnected from their identity, disconnected from their sense of te atea watanga. They are the people we need to reveal to first. Step three, the restoration of the Māori voice in this nation. And depending on who I'm talking to, I say the divine Māori voice in this nation. We are passed by cultural journeys, and I'm going to pinch um, 
Cindy Ruakiri has quoted all recently, uh, that it's a Māori journey. It's now a Māori journey. Bicultural journeys are a thing of the past. It's an unapologetic Māori journey. Why? Because the Pākehā story is already in this land. So the valleys need to rise and the mountains need to bow down to a time which is our time. Sound too spiritual for you? Well, okay. Let's talk in economic terms. The economy of ecology. Taranaki Maunga is undergoing transformational change in order to restore his habitat so the bird song can return to the mountain and, of course, because we as humans have interrupted and injured his ecological korowai. There are three steps to restoration of Taranaki Maunga, and they are remove the pests and weeds, create space for his repair. We made the mess, we need to clean it up. Step two, get community support to sustain the efforts over time. Reveal to the community what it needs to do collectively to make it right. Step three, reintroduce species, taonga, return the bird song to the maunga. What's good for koro is good for everybody. This is not radical, but it is transformational. Pain for peace. The ultimate inspiration for me on my journey towards healing is this. Tōukākai. Ko tōku ka'a me tōku reo e reo waka aire ki ene whakatupuranga he tangata whakaara ra koe mō ngā iwi e rua. E kore tō reo e taia te pē i ngā maunga nunui. E kore tō maunga i e taia te kōpani i ngā maunga nunui i ngā puke puke o te motu nei. Ka hai papa i tō reo ka whakahaire tikanga koe mo te kino kia mate i te pai. All my strength and voice is guidance to this generation that you be the empowerer of both peoples. Your voice cannot be smothered by the authorities. Your voice cannot be silenced by the powerful, nor the turbulent events of this land. Should your voice be abolished, you will use tikanga to respond to the hatred, overcoming it with kindness. And if we can just pause for a moment and consider what our tupuna faced, what they endured, and yet they said, overcome hatred, responding to it with kindness. That they loved us that much is overwhelming. Ko te riri me te raukura, me te tūorongo pūtaki o te riri. I have an observation from yesterday, being a part of the hakapōiri, or who have tutors. Because we laid down our weapons of war a long time ago, we have intergenerational humility, a sense of holding back before coming forward. That can be quite annoying when you're trying to get some stuff done because as most, most of us like to take a back seat. No, reframe that. Most of us insist that others sit in the front. That is our way. That our kuya and our pa'ake taught us. Our taranaki haka, even the fiercest, is tame compared to my Ngāti Awa relations. The night before Pūtake, when we were practising as a large roku out here, I felt our kaihaka become deflated, feeling a little insufficient. I prayed into the night for confidence, guidance, for the presence of our tupuna. The following day, we stood as taranaki in our way. And while we are all, we are all on different journeys, towards healing, I realised that we not only have a style, we have a presence. We're not a loose connect collection of hesitant, flexible, whatever goes. We are the deliberate manifestation of rungo. Where two resides, rungo is not silent. The ahua of rungo speaks to resilience, commitment and purpose, and we are more than sufficient. While we have intergenerational mamai, we have inherited and now practiced the legacy of maungārungo that is so needed in this world. Ko te tikanga o te maungārungo, and I, as I'm closing, look at koro Desmond Tutu's kōrero, and I replace the word forgiveness with maungārungo because forgiveness uh, has many connotations that people aren't ready to enter into. Maungārungo is not easy. It requires hard work and a constant willingness. It is not a weakness, it requires courage and strength. It does not subvert justice, it creates space for justice to be enacted with a purity of purpose that does not include anger. 
Maungarongo is not forgetting, it requires a fearless remembering of hurt. Maungarongo is not quick, it can take several journeys through the cycles of remembering and grief before one can truly forgive and be free. I repeat today the words I spoke at Hepuanga Hayata, to lay down our pain in exchange for peace as they laid down their weapons and their lives for us is the least we can do to honour their memory. We will always mourn them, but they did not make sacrifices for us to live in pain. They sacrificed in order for us to be free. And today, I add to those words, they sacrificed because they loved us. I tēnei rangi meherenga, ringa me ngā wai ki runga i tō tātou waka, i te rangi mārie me te manoa nui. He pua wai au nō runga i te tikanga, he aha te tikanga o te maunga rungo mo te oranga wairua. He rau ringa ringa nō roto i te raukura, he aha nō rā tō ringa ringa, tō rungo wā, tō whakapono. Ko taku raukura, he manawa nui ki te ao, ko tō raukura, ka titi ano i hoki tō mahunga, a ki tō ngā kau wairua anō hoki. A he aha rā hoki anō ngā hua hei painga mō ngā whakatipuranga kei te heke mai. Thank you for the privilege of speaking today. Wow. Uh, it's kind of dawned on me that you probably got that wow happening in your own heads as well. And so, puna, ami yatu ki a koe. Ko te puna aroha, ko te puna wakapono, ko te puna tumanako. E tū nei mui te aroaro, e kōrero nei, uh, nō reira i ronga i tērā, ami yatu ki a koe. Nō reira, I think we need a little bit of time to have a little kōrero with the person next to you. You've heard Ma Oturia's kōrero, you've heard Puna's kōrero, Take a bit of time. Turn to the person next to you. Have a conversation. Two minutes, Fano, and I'll be timing you. Where you go? Have a quarter, Fano. Ka pai anau, hoki mai koutou, hoki mai koutou uh, ki te pito nei o te kōrero, e kōrero hia nei.
That's wonderful. What our speakers have spoken about here is a national conversation. It's a conversation we all need to have. It's one for all of us. So uh, we, we will have another quarter after our next speaker, because I think that's really important that we able to, uh, you know, those thoughts that are milling around in our, in our head to, to, to speak them, to bring them out. So uh, our next kai kōrero that I'd like to uh, invite to the stage is uh, Dr. Will Edwards. Uh, Will will be talking about health and well-being and the future of our tribal communities, particularly our pāke. So, um, o mai te paki paki nei mō, o mai te Will, ara mai e Will. Puta na tamariki ngā mokopuna ki te ao mārama. Koi na tāku, koi na tā tātou e whai nei, e te iwi, te nā kotou, kia ora mai tātou katoa. Ko tai mai tēnei kānohi o te tunga, ko tai mai tēnei tamatāne o te tunga, me ngā wakaaro e huri huri haere ana mō tō tātou kaupapa a tā ua a te pūtake o te riri. Nōna na i nei, ka kitea ngā mai a tāhu i rungi tō tātou marae ātea, ka kitea ngā mai a tūmā tauenga i rungi te marae ātea. O te anō, ka kite te ātāhua, ka rongo i te ātāhua o te kōrero o rongo ki roto i te ikaroa Māui. Tinei ka mihi ake ki e rā mea e rua, e hari ana i te wā ko tai, ko tū, ko rongo, ko tātou. Ko ea te take i tikina atu ko tērā karakia o te kōpai piripono o ko nēna, hei tā uu kōrero mōku. Puna started with clicking the fingers and I thought, gee, I'd better try and do something similar. So kia ora aro aro in the whānau from te kōpai piripono mo te tautokora. Um, I haven't got prepared notes and I often sometimes do that and I, and I look around the crowd and I think about the, what we're here to do and what we're here to talk about. And I see Enoka, and I see Shani, and I think of Takawai. And I think of those decolonisation wānanga that mobilised, radicalised, and energised a whole lot of people, myself included. Kei te mihi ki tō kōrua pāpā. I hara mai rā, ki wāinganui a tātou o Taranaki. I nō o tai ki a uirangi mā. I nō o tai, ā, ko tana hihi ko hea tā ua, 
e mūra mūra tonu ana ki konei nā e mihi ana. <clears throat> Told you I didn't have notes. Um, that corridor, those 20 something years, 25 plus years of those decolonisation wānanga that Takawai and Chris now do, is about an awakening. Rua Kire calls it critical awareness. It's about that aha moment. It's about when things fall into place. And I can remember in 1993 being at Rangiate as a student and going out to Teniho or Te Atiawa and spending the first three days uh, in one of the decol wānanga. And at the start I sort of thought, yep, the last year Rua Kire and many of our many of our whanau ngahina te miringa had um, carried te toka hui no ia taranaki, hui no ia taranaki. And that was all about raising the awareness and, wa and raising the profile of the mamai, but also bringing together our people and to mobilise. It wasn't that long after that we were here at the fiscal envelope hui. Where I remember a whole lot of rangatahi saying, no, we don't want this. And I remember the rangatahi spokesperson who was delegated for the day one ngahi no hohaia, um, yes, um, doing a pretty awesome act out on the marae atea, and um, came to the time when the rangatahi spokesperson had to speak, and ngahi says, I'm not doing it. And then they said to Will, Will, you jump up there and do it. I said, I'm doing it with ngahi no. So we got up there and we did it and we, and we provided what we thought was a corridor for the rangatahi at that historic occasion of the fiscal envelope. I didn't tell many people that about two weeks earlier I had been working in the regional office of Te Puni Kōkiri. <laughs> and I didn't tell too many people that right across the way I was looking straight at Mahara Okero our whanaunga and when Te Ururo and others challenged me to step up I said, I've just been working in Tapuni Kōkiri. I understand this stuff. This is well, you understand it. Get up there. <laughs> so that, for me, was a really challenging moment. And it was about stepping up. And it was understanding that everyone has their role to play. I was in there, and there were some unkind words spoken about Tapuni Kōkiri staff in those days by many of our own. Unkind, harsh, heartfelt but harsh. So we, we went up there, Ngahine and I, we presented our corridor, and the rest is history. The treaty settlements rolled in, um, and they rolled on, and they rolled over us. Um, I stand here as a previous chair of a PSGE, of a post-settlement governance entity, Te Kora Wai Ngāruahine. And again, I reflect on some of the discussions that we have as iwi, as uri, about our roles. He wā mo te wero, he wā mo te fiti fiti kōrero. There's a time for tu mā and there's a time for rongo. But as a rangatahi once upon a time, and when I talk to some of our rangatahi from Ngāru Hine now, um, I asked them, where are you all? And they said, they say to me often, why would we come to those hui? All you fellas do is smash each other. Just before over here, when we were prepping for our corridor, we were talking about one of our, our, our first speakers said, oh, I hope there's not too many knives in the back, and we all laughed. And then we said, no, nah, there'll be knives in the front. And we all laughed, because that's what we get used to. Not knives here from any of you here today, by the way. <laughs> but why do we accept that? Why do we accept that vitriol? Why do we accept that disgusting behaviour of our own towards our own? Mite kōrero, kia mau ki te he wā no motu, he wā no morong. Puna earlier shared with us a very brave message that she's a follower of Christ. I mihi to that and to being, being secure in herself to do that and safe. 
Likewise, I say, I am not. But I love Punna. And I love those I was brought up hardcore Catholic, as my sisters over here know, and many of you will know. And I see Hare Arapere, Hato Paura, five years of good Catholic education. But when we consider the idea of decolonizing our soul, how do we go about doing that? But how do we go about doing that and reconciling this notion of tu, tu mātauinga and rongo, of Christianity and whakāro tuturu, tuturu Māori? Ki au, before, back in the day, I used to sit down when, um, uh, not long after Takawai's Wānanga actually, <laughs> um, we used to sit down during the hymns, we actively sat down, and I understand that. I now will stand up, I can't quite get to the point where I'll sing the hymn, but I'll think positive vibes and think with love. Ko te aroha te mea nui ki a au. E ai ki te kōrero ko tō piki a mokura nō, ko tō ku piki a mokura nō ku. He wa nō, ko te kaupapa, kia puta a tātou tamariki a tātou mokupuna ki te whae ao, ki te ao mārama. I actually am here to talk about um, health and well-being in the future. And this is actually the foundations that we are laying, I believe, for health and well-being in the future. Because I believe the settlement journey, I've said to many of our people back at Ngāru Ehine, um, our final quantum was about 67 and a half million. I say we could have got 500 million, we've co we could have got a billion but if we aren't settling here, and speakers said that yesterday, what's it all for? What is it actually all for? So I think we've got some work to do internally. Kia hoki anō, te ra ahuatanga o rongo tautika, balance. He wā mō tū mātauenga, he wā anō mō rongo. And reconciliation, internal reconciliation. Some people talk, talk about the historic trauma that we suffer. As I believe as individuals, as whānau, and as a community, we need to come to terms with that trauma. Kia whakatakoto here, he pūtake, kaua mo te riri, he pūtake mo te rongo, he pūtake hare wakamua mō ngā uri mō ngā mokopuna. He pāinga mā tātou, he paenga mō te aroa. So my challenge today, I've got three challenges. The first is that very thing, that we need to come to terms with the trauma of raupatu and muru and all of the nasty baggage that it brings with it. When I say about our challenging behaviours or our unacceptable behaviours, I'm not saying we don't have firm debate. I'm not saying we don't advocate very, very strongly for our point of view. I'm just saying we do that with respect. That we do that with aroha. And we do that to engender hope. Not fear. Not aggression. And also not to repel people like those rangatahi I mentioned before, because who really wants to be part of that? Um, there's a, I won't name him, but there's a politicised individual from Ngāru Ehine who has a, uh, quite a high profile, and um, when we're at our hapuhui, challenges often come out to me. Um, myself and my relation who sit on Te Korawai o Ngāru Ehine, our PSG board. And um, the words, we'll see you in court, come out frequently. Not quite monthly, but frequently. I've discovered over the last about five years, when I say, te koti, kone to tato koti, forget about the court, here's our court, our whare. 
uh, for that type of horror rangi, uh, opened by a person known as Titoko Waru. Here's our court. If you have an issue with me, let's play it out here in our whare with our own people. Our witnesses are those of our whanaunga that are with us. Our judges are our mokopuna that are there. And our supporters are our tupuna that are, on the wind, uh, that are there hanging around in our whare and our pictures. Ara ke te wahang te wahi mo te taukumukumu. Ara no mena ka piki rawa ki te riri ae me puta ki waho pea ki te marae atea ki reira tau toe toe ae. O te anō ki hoki anō ki roto i te oare ki reira ki tō tātou koti. Ki reira ki te wahi ki a kōrero ngā kōrero e tika ana ki a noho ki tō wake marae. Ka ue waka mahi a puka mata hei marae atea ko wepo au i rotu i ngā wiki nei. Ko e mahi a puka mata, don't use Facebook as our marae atea, nor should we use the media or press, especially with our own. Take it back to your own place, have that kōrero, and even if that kōrero must take, I was going to say weeks, <laughs> even if that kōrero must take years, that's the way it has to be. So that's my first challenge is we need to come to terms with that muru and that raupatu as individuals, as whānau and as collectives, and I believe and as iwi, actually as a Māori nation and as a nation um, of Aotearoa New Zealand. My second challenge is for the Pākaha community. And it's not really a challenge for those here because you're the converted. But following on from, from um, Andrew Judd's corridor last night, there's much work for you to do, to advocate on our behalf, and to be part of those conversations that we're not privy to around the dinner table at the bus stop and calling it out. Just call it out. And I'm sure there are people around like Pat Snedden, like, like, um, like Andrew Judd and others, that have developed a toolkit to, to enable you to do that good work that must be done. That's your responsibility. Tukuna tērā kōrero ki Share that kōrero, because that's not our work. I can remember three days after being elected to chair of Te Korowai o Ngāru um, we had to meet with Chris Finlayson. And he talked about um, this thing called the Post Settlement um, Compliance Unit, Post Settlement something unit back in the day it was called. <laughs> Kia ora. Kia ora dai. <laughs> the Post Settlement Commitment Unit. And three days into the job, I sat there and went, okay, that's really, really good ground. They're actually the crown. This person in front of me is talking about taking those new commitments seriously. What I said to them, and that's my second message, and that's the message I want to share and the challenge to our Pākehā community is from an institutional level, shift from compliance and getting dragged, kicking and screaming to opportunity. That's my challenge to the Pākehā community. Shift from guilt to opportunity and think about the new nation we can forge together because our tupuna have given enough. Our people have given enough. The compromise that Ruakiri talked about yesterday, we've compromised enough. We're all here. Challenge those people in your spheres. And the third challenge is for us all to think about Laying a solid foundation for the future for those for those uri and mokopuna. That karakia we started with, and I loved it because Enok was here. I can remember Enok as a young teacher at Te Pihi Pihinga doing that. And he had big dreads, long dreads in those days, so did I actually. And I can remember this dude who is a tough street fighter. 
he uri no tu mātauenga. But I can remember him doing that beautiful karakia with our tamariki, and I sort of looked there and went, oh my gosh, he's there with, with tamariki, and it's a beautiful thing to see. Those really, really basic things, karakia that we teach and we share with our uri and our mokopuna, are actually the messages we need. We don't have to get that complicated. I'm here as Dr. Will Edwards, I hear. But um, we don't need too much more. Yes, there's depth. Yes, there's evidence we have to collect. Yes, there's evidence we have to collect to be persuasive in certain areas. But in our own kōrero, in our own karakia that we do with our tamariki and our mokopuna, are a lot of the messages that we as Māori and should Māori or hapu or, or whānau be prepared to share, and that's their decision whether they do or not, to open that door and share that kōrero with Pākehā as well. There's amazing messages in that. If I can return to that first challenge about us coming to terms. Huirangi Waikere Puru, one of his favourite kōrero to us is... Kia o te aronga, kia o te araro kaputai ki wao. We can take that, there's a lot of depth in that short kōrero. Get the spiritual realm sorted, get the physical realm sorted, and then emanate out. Or it might be as simple as get your house in order before you share high floofing messages or you go outside of your rohe. Kia o te aronga, kia o te araro kaputai ki wao. So that's the kōrero I'd like to leave with you tonight. I think my time's up. I didn't even push start on my timer. Hey, <laughs> <A> Tamsin. <laughs> I love I loved Tamsin's kōrero last night. Hey, actually, are you on air tomorrow? I better shush. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Koina taku kōrero waka kapinga mo te pō nei ne. Um, era taha e rua. Kraiti ana tuturu Māori. Tu mā tauenga rongo. Roto wao. Māori pākea. Ngā rua hine taranaki. <laughs> te ati awa. Era mea katoa. Kia hoki mai anō tērā ahuatanga o rongo tautika. Balance, equity, equality. There's some beautiful kōrero for us. Nō reira, kia o te arunga, kia o te araro, a kaputa ai ki waho. Tēnā koutou, kia ora mai tātou katoa. So uh, we're going to have another another discussion and just thinking about Will's kōrero, there's a, there was a lot in there. But one thing that started, that resonated with me was uh, this phrase, we have to unlearn what we've learnt. It's kind of thinking about that, we have to unlearn what we've learnt. Have a kōrero, what's that mean? We have to unlearn what we've learnt. A couple of minutes. Just while you do that, Fano, if you're um, outside there and you want to come in, which we want you to do because it's warmer under here, you can bring your seats in. Come in, Fano. Come in while the, the conversations are happening. We have to unlearn what we've learnt. There you go. I'll give you five minutes for that one, not two. Hold on, Mike. Come in. Bring your chairs in. Bring the seats in. Come and sit inside.
Ka pai wa nau. O ki mai koutou. O ki mai koutou ki te pito nei o te orea o karuru au. E kōrero ia nei ki a koutou. Ka pai wha nau, I can feel the, uh, feel the kōrero energy uh, within the whare tonight. And having our little conversations, I think, is really important. Gives us an opportunity just to uh, sift through some of the, the information that we've heard. So we've, um, we're going to move now to our next speak, uh, speaker. So our next speaker will be uh, Te Waka McLeod. Waitara Reis, Taiohi Voice. What does the future look like? Her spiritual journey. A uh, pleasure to introduce an ex-student of mine when I used to teach at Manukurahi Intermediate School a long time ago. I was known as Mr. Ritai then, so if you hear any stories about me, it's not true. It's all good stories. So uh, I'm going to introduce Te Waka, but before that, we've got a little video that we need to play. So uh, Sam, hit play. He's just getting ready, he's just getting ready. So I was asked last week to come and talk on this uh, tai, uh, in this Taiohi space. So thank you to the organisers who have asked me to speak into this um, space of um, my journey in the spiritual world. Um, and I wanted to show that video because I think that was a moment in my life when I turned 30 um, that I became probably more aware of who I am as a Māori. Um, I remember when I moved um, to Auckland a little while back, 
four years ago, actually, um, nearly to the day, um, I said to the um, CEO of Parenting Place, um, when he asked me to move back to Tāmaki, I said, I'll only come if I can be fully Māori in a Pākehā organisation. And he said, what does that look like? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. And um, he said, okay, well, well, I'll get back to you. He went away and thought about it, and I went away and thought about it, and I was like, oh, actually, I don't want to go back to Auckland. And he came back and he said, yeah, I'll let you be fully Māori in a Pākehā space and, um, and a Christian space. Um, parenting Place was um, birthed out of a, a Christian kaupapa, and I said, okay, I'll come back to Tāmaki then. And so I moved back to Tāmaki Makoto um, four years ago, and I've never felt more Māori than I am today. Um, I think my experience growing up as a young kaiohe from here, from Waitara, um, with a black power dad and a mum who was staunch kaupapa Māori, but unfortunately wasn't growing up, wasn't brought up in that space of um, immersed in te ao Māori. Uh, my mum fought and fought um, for us as tamariki. I'm one of seven. I'm one of seven tamariki who my mum wanted to pl plant the seed in us around wairuatanga. She probably didn't know at that time what she was doing, but thankfully she had a, an amazing community here in Waitara who helped her to nurture that, that thing and that seed in all of us children. Um, as, as we were growing up, I guess I had many moments as a rangatahi, as a taiohi, trying to figure out what it was that we were supposed to be connecting to. I, I, I remember a few going to a few wānanga out at Urenui, but I can only remember one or two. So in terms of my um, immersion in te reo Māori and being immersed in kaupapa Māori, um, I guess that was in my schooling, my kōhanga reo. It wasn't until later on, actually, when I became a Christian or when I asked the question, um, will I be a follower of Christ, that I developed this understanding. And kia ora to you, Puna, for owning that. I think you've helped me over the years um, since you've kind of, I guess, have publicly gone and said um, that you follow Christ. I have, it's given me a confidence to know, and I knew that I could do this, but it's given me a confidence to say, I am fully Māori, I'm fully Christian as well, and I'm fully a believer of Christ. However, I'm tuturu... <laughs> <laughs> However, I'm fully... <laughs> I love the clap. <laughs> um, I, I fully want to be just as immersed in my taha Māori as I am in my Christian context. And it's been my, um, my ability to keep coming home to keep being immersed in kaupapa, to keep serving kaupapa that have allowed me to be all of who I have been created to be. And so in terms of wairuatanga, I look, I even look out now to, to my peers and my age group, and I can count them sitting in this tent. And so I ask the question, why has my generation not been able to be immersed in, in something of wairua? And where are they now? I walked past today as we were downtown. I went to the hoko hoko shop. Whenever I come back to Waitara, my go-to is to go to Koso. Um, I walked past two of my whanaunga that I um, went to school with, and I could see that they were on a different way to a buzz, and it killed me. It killed me. And so I'm so grateful for Taranaki Iwi, and Te Atiawa Nui Tonu for for bringing back to life for my generation wānanga spaces and wānanga spaces that help us to connect to something of wairua because I think that's what my generation's missing. And so my widow to, to all of us is how, how do we foster and how do we um, present, whether it's tuturu Māori, you know, karaitiana, katorika, whatever it is, how do we how do we bring, bring rangatahi into those spaces that's, so that they can actually experience those moments to be able to choose those pathways that they might choose? And I've been fortunate to, um, as, as you would have seen in my, my video that was captured, um, my mum that was done out at Wahapakapaka, um, where, I was, where I was given my moko bairangi and 
that there when there was, you know, we talk about baptism within Christianity or faith, but as I came up off that table, that's what it felt like when I was baptized in the water. And I felt this, and I remember that moment when I sat up, for those that were there will remember it, when I sat up off that table, it bucketed down with rain to the point where it fell through the, through the roof, because it's a pretty old building, <laughs> where it fell through the roof and it, it, it actually sprinkled on my, on my tinana. And for me, that's wairua. And, and may we continue to, as, as Taranaki, may we continue to bring our rangatahi into those spaces. And may we and our marae be filled with spaces. And I think over the last few days, we've felt that. We've felt that. We've felt that wairua that, that we're longing for, my generation's longing for. And I've lost my parents um, I've got an Anna still alive who li- lives up the Whanganui River in Jerusalem. And I've lost my parents. And so for us as, ra- um, as, as young kids who lost parents, we lost that connection. And so we've had, what well, I've had to work, we've had to work really hard to try and stay connected. Try and stay connected to our iwi. Try and stay connected to this thing about home. And for our tamariki and our mokopuna, and again, my generation, it's going, and I know the stats, I work at Parenting Place, and we hear stats around their disconnect from whānau, their disconnect from whānau. And so my challenge to us is that will we, will we continue to bring forth those spaces where we can explore, where we can dive into this thing called wairua, this thing called wairua tanga, and again, I'm so passionate and I love what everybody said about, you know, we, we can have two sides, but I think it's special to be able to be in the space and, and who, who we are fully as Māori, who we are fully as, as Pākehā. I'm, I, I, I'm slowly recognising that I'm fully Scottish as well. <laughs> Te Ako and I and, and a few others from Pariaka, we went to Scotland earlier this year and I felt that sense of home. When we stepped on that whenua um, and went up to the castle where, where my tupuna came from, I felt that sense of home. And so, you know, my prayer and my hope is that as we continue to do kopapa like this, is that they would be filled with those beautiful spaces instead of those stabbings that we might feel. They're filled with aroha, that rangatahi, that, that people can come into these spaces and feel welcomed and feel loved and nurtured where they can experience this wairua. Nō reira, he pua waiau nō rotu i te tikanga, he rau ringa ringa nō rotu i te raukura, ko taku raukura e, he mana wanui ki te ao, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, a tēnā ratatou katoa. Pai, te nā koe te waka, rua pau namu McLeod, uh, ki tēnā o rangono nei, ki te ingo o tōna whai e ine, uh, ko rua pau namu anō, uh, tika nei te mi atu ki a koe, puta nei ko tēnei, tēnei kōrero, uh, baptism of enlightenment, kind of what was uh, sort of resonating a little bit with me through te waka's kōrero. Uh, have you had enlightenment or how do we get to enlightenment in, term of, in terms of us? as one people, as one nation. So have a little quarter to find a couple of minutes. Enlightenment. Kaya <laughs> koto.
き取りや回答は回答はことうこでウィッチがマヌエルは一発で終わりにきてらぎまりえさうえさうえあっあっわいてパウアタンがおっぱりやかうえうえうえてなこと katua ai he uri moko puna te nei o pariaka o ngati moya o ngati ai poto he uri moko puna hoki o te marae o muri rai patu a ko ngati puketa pu te nei e tua nei moya e koto a te na koto katua he paku faka mara mai te tua tahi i wore gum boots all day today and then thought we were in the fade hence my who um <laughs> And then I hadn't expected to go on all the site visits today, hence my kanohi <laughs> whero. Um, and because I went on site visits that I hadn't anticipated on going, I uh, limited the time I had available to prepare my kōrero. <laughs> so like Will, um, I'm, I'm good at just following a few notes, so we'll, we'll see how we go. Um, but a bit of background about me, obviously Mokopuna of Parihaka and Muru Raupatu, and many of you in the room are also descendants of Tamati Whanganui, like I, who was a, a, a Parihaka prisoner, um, who actually built our marae called Muru Raupatu. Uh, I, have spent, I spent 15 years of my professional career uh, practicing as a lawyer doing Waitangi tribunal hearings for a number of iwi across the country, as well as uh, treaty settlement negotiations for a number of iwi, until I had the opportunity to come home and be the negotiation manager for Taranaki iwi settlement. I then uh, jumped ship a little bit and moved into the chair role for uh, Kotahi Tango Tiatiao, which is the PSGE post-settlement governance entity for Te Atiawa, and now I wear a Maunga negotiator portai as well. So the, the bulk of my uh, professional career has uh, been based around my belief in treaty settlements, my belief that they provide an opportunity for our people to move forward. Uh, also based on an understanding that those settlements are political settlements, they are not designed to be just, and they're not designed to be fair. And when you enter into a process like that, it's really difficult um, trying to reconcile all of that in your mind. Uh, and, and actually, this past week, that whole concept of uh, unjust and unfair treaty settlements and treaty negotiation process pretty much slapped me in the face. So we were in Wellington, and we were at the third reading for Te Pirehaya Taki Kiparihaka. And in that settlement, $9 million, quantum was passed over to, uh, well, quantum, it wasn't really a settlement, it was a redress, um, was uh, provided for Parihaka. There were no pardons in that, in that process for our tupuna, because in order to get a formal pardon, you needed to be charged and convicted. So you can't expunge a, a record that doesn't exist technically. So none of our tupuna, including Tamati Wanganui, uh, received a pardon. And I guess I, I went home and I had some other kaupapa on, got home and I re-watched some of the news feeds. It wasn't a headline story on any of our national news feeds. Most of them, it was around 35 minutes into the hour bulletin that the story featured. And at the same time, I watched the news and the headline story was all about a $700 million build going up in flames. And I, I don't know what it was about that series of circumstances on that particular day, but the whole injustice of treaty settlements really slapped me in the face 
that day. And, and it's kind of carried through a little bit more. Not so much that I, um, I don't believe in treaty settlements anymore because I do believe there's a place for them. But really getting the message out and trying to understand what treaty settlements mean for us um, going forward. And a lot of, I think my role probably now is to try and discuss more openly the misconceptions and misunderstandings about what treaty settlements really are. Um, and if I reflect on the Te deed of settlement, uh, personally, one of the most difficult times I've ever had in my entire life. Um, not only was my koro there <laughs> to be my po when I needed him to be, but our deed of settlement was not unanimously supported. And I talk about this openly, and it's not, you know, there's no element of blame around why people took positions. Our people were protesting at the gate. Our hapu of Waitara were protesting at the gate. Um, I was six months hapu with my first baby, and Puna and I talk about this lots. Um, Puna, Puna wasn't there that day. And I'm okay with that, and we're okay with that, because she felt she just couldn't be there that day because of everything that was surrounding that settlement. Also quite uniquely, unique for Te Atiawa is that our, our apology from the Crown wasn't read out that day. None of the marae would take a booking for our deed of settle, settlement signing, so we held it up at Rangiatia. And so those whole set of circumstances, and I reflect now, and I, um, many people have challenged me about why did, we, why did we sign it? Why did we sign, in all of those circumstances, why did we sign it? Um, and for me, it's because I had the ultimate belief, and I still do, that had we not signed, we would be in a worse position than we are now. And I believe that because I believe in the people that uh, were given the responsibility to administer the settlement. And I also believe in our team of kaimahi that are now engaged in, in administering our settlement and working on behalf of our people. Um, rightly or wrongly, and I, there, are, there are multiple sides to that, and I, I understand uh, the reasons why that's settlement wasn't supported at the time, but equally I understand the reasons why it was. And I guess when I look at the post-settlement governance environment, one of the things, one of the biggest challenges for us, and this is my view, that actually PSGEs become the scapegoat for the Crown. And, and I believe they become the scapegoat because their settlements are signed and then all of the hudder about them not being just and fair settlements gets lumped on a PSGE. And the PSGE is there to administer what the Crown's prepared to give us, basically. The PSGE isn't designed to fix up what the Crown couldn't give us or weren't prepared to give us. And, and that's one of the challenges that we face as governors of a PSGE. I'm very clear in my mind, the PSGE is not our iwi. The PSGE is an entity that provides resource and support to empower our people and our iwi. Our people are our iwi. And, and with that in mind, that's one of the things that helps us keep moving through What's, it's still a difficult process. We signed our deed of settlement uh, five years ago. We still have struggles. We still have struggles about signing the deed of settlement. We still have struggles about the fairness of it all. Um, but I believe that, that and I, I'm, a, I'm an optimist at heart. I have the utmost optimism that our people Will, um, will actually be able to flourish and thrive 
in an environment where we're not dependent on the Crown and reliant on the Crown. And that's what I hope that our treaty settlements will do, is enable us to do things for ourselves. And my belief in, as a part of my professional career was always about that, that treaty settlements would provide an opportunity for us to do things for ourselves and not be, um, I guess, tied to the Crown forever and a day. It's a pretty uh, tough gig, <laughs> if I put it that way, um, to implement a settlement and to have the expectations of your people and the community, to be frank, that, that our entity is going to be the one that rebuilds all of the uh, social, cultural, spiritual and economic structures that were destroyed as a part of colonisation and the Crown's actions. And that's a, that's a heavy burden for, for anyone to wear, let alone an entity that's not designed to do that. And so part of the, the discussion really is understanding PSGEs are simply there to help enable, empower and support, empower and support our people. They're not there to right the wrongs that the Crown couldn't right. They're not there to be answerable and accountable to the Crown. And one of our challenges is we need to keep uh, challenging the Crown. Everyone talks about full and final settlements. I don't know about you, but there are loads of deeds, deeds to amend, deeds of settlements. There are loads of them. I think ours alone has three. And when you talk about full and final, it doesn't mean that the Crown's obligations stop because they've signed off a settlement that's not just and not fair. Their obligations under the treaty continue, and for us it's, it's continually challenging that. One of, the, one of the, the struggles we have too is what the community thinks about settlements. And we all hear the rhetoric in the media, we hear a lot of rhetoric well, why is all that money going to treaty settlements? Why are those iwi? Oh, they can't even help themselves. They can't, you know, they've got all the health issues. The iwi should be sorting those out. Oh, you know, there's all these education issues. Iwi should be sorting that out. Let me just put it in perspective for you a little bit. Our Taranaki DHB annual budget is more than all of our eight iwi settlements combined will be that's their annual budget for one year, is more than the 172 odd years of Crown confiscation put together. That's the context for us. So here we have expectation of our com some of our elements of our community to, uh, to right the wrongs of, or the, you know, to uh, help our people get out of the lower uh, socio-economic statistics and our settlements combined are less than the annual budget of the local DHB. Um, and that will be an ongoing challenge for us, an absolute ongoing challenge for us. And I don't, I don't talk about all of this to make us all feel pody again about <laughs> where we're at because I think the, the future of, of our people, if you looked at our marae on Sunday, oh, sorry, Sunday and Monday, and you saw our rangatahi standing proud as punch to be from here and to be Māori, um, to be from Taranaki, and, and how they've held themselves throughout these last few days. I am so hopeful. I'm hopeful um, because I can see our kids and my kids have an opportunity for real Māori immersion schooling that I didn't have that opportunity for. And I'm, I'm so hopeful that, that we are making things better for them and they will make be things better for their, their kids, our mokopuna. And, and I really believe in hope and optimism because our, our tupuna and their resilience and everything that they've faced uh, you know, all of all through confiscation and, and various crown actions, they were so resilient. We always talk about it. And we're still here. 
And if we can't keep fighting the fight for the next generations and keep making it better, what's the point of what they did? What's the point of what our tūpuna went through if we can't continue to improve and build and if we can't put all of our hope in our, in our mokopuna in Tamariki? I guess the, probably the last thing I, I want to end on, and it was some of the discussion that, um, that Damon made us talk about, about moving in, you know, enlightenment. And of course we want that for our people. And the challenge really that I, I personally face, and I know many of us will, is how do we help our whānau that aren't in the space to be enlightened right now? That's our challenge. There are many that, that are just not in that space. And we need to find ways and strategy. I don't have the answers, but someone's got the answers. And actually, collectively, we probably have the answers. Um, and and that, that continues to be our challenge, to, to empower our whānau and do things for ourselves and we all need to take individual responsibility for our own whānau. And I often reflect on mine. My father is one of 13. My mum is one of eight. And my partner and I and our babies are the only real Māori-speaking whānau. So you think of all the, all the branches of that, of that waka papa, and we are the only real Māori-speaking whānau. And we... We're not flash, but we are giving it a damn good go. Um, and, and, and that's what we have to... Our challenge is, is how do we help others in our whānau to, to be empowered and proud of who they are. So, koe rā tāku i tēnei wā, me i ana ki a koutou, me i ana ki tēnei o ngā kaupapa me ngā kōrero. Tēnā tātou. Whānau. So uh, just something there that, that I, I took away from Liana's kōrero, something that kind of resonated with me in that whole uh, presentation, and that was about true partnership. What's true partnership look like? Because if we had true partnership, we would be going into a process where there is equity, equality the addressing or redressing of mamai. So, a couple of minutes, whānau, have a kōrero. What's true partnership look like? Kōrero mai, where you go? Two minutes. Oki pera, oki pera. Okay, kapai wa no, okay mai. 
Oki mai koutou. Pai ana tēnei te pātai. Tēnā koutou katoa. So, uh, true, authentic partnership. What does that look like? One of the things I get reminded about quite often is the relationship you have with your husband or your wife or your partner. Because if you want to know what true partnership looks like, then there's a good example. So if that was the case, how and what would be the expectations around us as a people having true partnership. So as our speakers, and I just want to acknowledge our speakers uh, for tonight, Ma Paturia, uh, White, Puna Wano Bryant, Will Edwards, Te Waka McLeod and Liana Poutu, O Mai Te Paki Paki. Uh, you have all enabled us to uh, open our hearts and minds and to uh, discuss some of the, the big issues that we have uh, with our nation, uh, with us as a people. And so today, as uh, Kirin and I were uh, reflecting on having our rangatahi with us today, on the marae atia, uh, in their different groups and doing all their wonderful mahi, uh, question we both posed, and this is a question that's good for all of us. Where to now, Fano? So now we've had te putake o te riri. We got tomorrow to go. It's only a half day, but where to now? So now what? What does that mean for us as uh, Manu Korihi Pa Hapu? What does that mean for us as Tiatiawa? Iwi, taranaki iwi, ngā iwi o te, te maunga. What does that mean for us as the community of Waitara, the community of Ngamotu, of Taranaki? What's next? We wait another 160 years and then we all come back together again? What will that be like? Prime Minister talked about 2040. So, uh, you know, 200 years, is that right? 200 years, signing of the Chichi of Waitangi, what would that look like? So that's the party. What's next? So now what? Hoki Pet is over here with the microphone. You got some enlightenment for us tonight and uh, some courageous corridor around what ideas you might have because uh, that's what this is about. It's about a conversation. Then please raise your hand. Hoki Pera will come to you. Kōrero mai e te ana. I know it's a little bit intimidating uh, having to speak in front of a big crowd. It's better when you can speak to your your partner or your mate or for knowing you're next to you. But in terms of us uh, as a people, where to now? Kaya koto, hands raised really high, up high. <laughs> Hoki Pera will come to you. Uh, tēnā koutou ngā whānau, ngā manuhiri o manukurihi marae. Um, tonight I want to talk about what I believe to be the remedy for um, change into the future so that our mokopuna can be provided for. Because I believe um, the constitutional arrangements that are, are being used by our people today are actually uh, flawed. And so... I'll use a legislation I believe will make changes and I'll explain to you the way I believe it should be used. And um, if we truly want to provide for our, our mukapuna in the future, we have to put things in place so that they um, resemble the way that Māori were established in, in the old times when communal responsibility was the thing that made us strong. It ensured that others wish to work with us. So if, if we're not thinking about the 
the people that are the most important, which is the future generations. When I was a kid, they used to talk about, yeah, we'll provide for our mokopuna. I've heard that so long in my life, and I've never seen it happen. But the legislation of the Tūri Whenua Māori Land Act actually provides for us that remedy that would take us forward and put things in place for our future generations. Māori Corporation haven't been used correctly within the legislation, and I think it was purposely done by uh, leaders of the past because they thought that was the way of holding on to their seniority in regards to land holding. And so we fell into the trap of believing that was the way forward, and so put our land within these Māori Corporation. And so we end up in the share process where it allows people to have a succession to that share and then actually being able to market it. So when they do that, they take away the inheritance of future generations because of somebody's desire to sell. And so in regards to the Tūri Whenua Māori Land Act, there's two parts, and it's part 12 and part 13. The Māori Incorporation being under part 13. Part 12 provides for trust. You know, the trust, that's where all the people are. That's where there's a majority of our people. And you only have a minority that um, have control of those shares within the Māori Incorporation. And so the interest looks after those minority. Whereas being Māori, we're collective, and we believe in our responsibility to one another. So I say the land should go into the part 12, into the trust. Uh, Whenua Tupu Trust being the best structure for hapu. Because, as we know, if you read the legislation, it says quite clearly that even public, public works land can be returned through that Whenua Tupu Trust. And so it works in regards to succession also because it guarantees that that land remains with the collective forever and ever if the succession is in the beneficiaries under the trust. The Māori Corporation, it's a business arm, so its job is to provide to the trust where the people are. Its only job is to make money, and so really and truly, a Māori Corporation is a parking organisation and his job is to maximise the capacity of making money to provide to the trust. So if you truly want a remedy, then it can only come through uh, the correct structure. I've read lots of things. I was reading a paper by uh, Hugh Cutterfew the other day, and I had, had a laugh because he... I didn't laugh, actually. I was quite sad because I realised that you know, you have all these learned people. I learned under Fatarangi Winiata and, and, and others like um, Tudor Royal and, you know, um, what was his name? Hohaia Collier and all these other um, economic people and, and Moana Jackson in them. And, you know, Moana Jackson, even though he's learned in regards to mana enhancing things for Māori dim, I ask, why don't these people with doctrines and, um, you know, all the big qualifications, why aren't they um, supporting this type of process that's actually going to provide for Māori, um, allow our mokopuna to be cared for forever and ever, putting in uh, incentives together based around commercialism, sharing their wealth with the trust where all the people are, you know? You hear these sovereigns around the country... They talk about, oh, with our sovereigns. Well, what do they provide for their people? It's generally nothing because they worry about their own pocket and their own interests in their small groupings. An example of it would be if 25% gave those people the right to form a Māori corporation, then if there was only four shareholders, that means only one person could form that incorporation. And so the wealth would only go to the four, but the one person runs it. And so that's not fair because the people sitting in the hapu aren't being provided for by the wealth. And so 
I believe that's where the remedy sits and it's up to the leaders of today to look hard at that and if they truly want to make things better for us. Oh, I think it's here now. Thank Kia ora. you. Ka whanau. So the party still stands fine. So anyone else like to uh, participate in that conversation? Just a reminder, I do have a time limit. When you hear the bell, ding, it means you've got 30 seconds left. Kia ora. Oh, kia ora, everybody. I'm Grant Nucky. I've been around the traps for a while. Um, I suppose I was here for our Waitangi Tribunal hearings held in this house. And it seems like that uh, this weekend is just a repeat of some of that stuff. Now, I suppose uh, for me, uh, to get to the end, because, you know, I sat at the table with the, I suppose, the, the negotiations and settlements of our Te Atiawa settlement. Yes, we weren't allowed to come to this marae and sign off. We weren't allowed to go to any of the other marae to sign off, but we found the space. Yes, there were hapu who were outside of it, but that was their choice. But remembering that at the beginning of the process, you know, years ago, Pukatapu didn't want to sit around the table with them either. So we went round, the, round and round the courts trying to settle it. So we ended up, yep, two hapu outside, two hapu inside, or four hapu inside, but we settled. And that's the end of it. We are now, oh, I suppose, on a new journey. <coughs> we do have in place a trust charged with the responsibility of enhancing the wealth of what we settle with and the wealth and responsibility of the people, the beneficiaries or the members, whatever that Pākehā D says. That's what we're doing. My view is this. <clears throat> we talk about the Treaty of Waitangi and we talk about the partnership I don't think it's a marriage. <laughs> but to me, it's about married democracy. If we want democracy in this country, as Māori, we should just assert it through that treaty f process and say our partnership is our right to serve and to create our own democracy amongst Māori so that we elect and support our leadership, much the same as the Pākehā does. Because Pākehās understand what they think is democracy. We practice something else as Māori. One day we support each other, but the next day we do something different. But to me, we need to register and have a Māori process where we elect our, our leaders and reinvigorate them every three years. So we stay connected and they serve the people. And like everyone else who doesn't serve the people, you get tossed out. And unless we have a process like that, we're stuck in our haputanga and that's fine. But it has a place but I don't think it has a place in the modern world of politics. And that's where the business is. We know, that our, we know that the Ropatu or the, the wars were caused and they started in England. We weren't aware of the way that they thought until they arrived and it was too late. And of course, we know that some of our people joined them. That's how why they were so successful. We did it to ourselves. But for us today, anyway, I believe... Kāpai. Three, two, one. Tēnā koe matua. Kia ora. Kore roa no koutou. Kāpai. 
Just a reminder, the ding is a 30-second mark. <laughs> You've still got 30 seconds after the ding. Kia ora. Yeah. Tams of the moment, but I'll bet it. Tams of the moment, I can talk on too, but I bet not. Um, tēnā tātou, a ko shumontari a hau, he uri a hau nō tia tia wa, a ngā rue ne, ngā te ruanui, ngā te maru, ngā te toa, waikato, a tū mau ke raratonga. Uh, um, I just thought I'd just stand. I don't know why the water was going again. Um, just as a rangatahi a taioi. Um, my face not be, be too familiar, but um, I grew up here as a child in Waitara. Um, my family moved all over and then we moved to Auckland for 10 years. And that disconnect that um, Te Waka was talking about, you know, trying to maintain your Māori tanga in a city was super hard for us um, and my siblings. And then moving back to Wellington in just this year, I've never come home so much in a year. Um, attended the summit that the whānau put together this year, and it was super awesome to just connect to um, other Wanonga, um, but also to other whānau that have moved away from home. Um, and just in this last year, I've realised that we are in a time where people are not living in enlightenment, and I would say I was one of them. Um, of recognising who I was, my identity, um, ko waio, as Māori. Um, and just going through Te Wānanga Aotearoa this year, my studies, I've recognised that the state of Māori moi is real. Just not being conscious of who you are, what you're up to, where you're going. Um, you think you know what you are and then you just don't. Um, and then you come home and then you just feel it. feel the wairua, I feel it this week especially. Um, and then I think... What's worked for me is recognising that we can get to a state of being conscious if we tune into it. Um, and I've been privileged to be in a space, being in Wananga here, away and all over, but also um, in my studies, where we get challenged and we get asked to reflect. And I think there's power in reflection. So this whole time this week we've been reflecting, eh? Mm. But it's like, how do we get from that reflection to um, Modi Oho? wake up now, what are we going to do moving forward? And I speak strongly as a um, rangatahi who is so passionate about our people and wanting to see change moving forward. And I think what I did pick out, coming home, um, was how much we are connected, like we were talking about, within our own personal hapu and our own whānau and our own lines. Um, my nan was a pūe and my um, other nan on my dad's side is a wineta. Um And so... We got our own little pockets that we all know, our whānau, everyone knows us. Um, but wider scale was quite, you know, no more, not everyone's quite connected. And I've realised that it's only relationships are built through connection. Um, and it's not just enough to wānanga together on your own generation's line. We need to do it the other way as well, between tuakana and teina, uh, karaua, kaumātua, to, you know, our pakeke and to our rangatahi this way. Because um, that's what, I guess, Tamsin touched on. She was privileged to sit at the feet of her, um, you know, beautiful leaders. And we don't know, we'll get that. And so how do we get to um, create that for our whānau? Um, and so I look forward to perhaps... Spaces like this where we can connect, not just hang with your own mates in your own age group, <laughs> but, you know, people that are holding the kōrero and, and I mean, the richness that um, not all of us are privileged to and just, I guess, opening that up for all of us. Um, but, I don't know what I'm saying now. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, kāroha to everyone, and I just hope that we do create spaces where we can all um, reflect on this, but also wānanga together... And connect. Um, yeah, that was one of my wero to Te Atea Wamuna. We had a panel this year. It's cool. We can, we, as Rangatahi, not all of us are in Māori, uh, Māori uh, moi. Some of us are fully conscious, fully motivated, conceived down there, and are really ex- um, passionate and excited and ready to mahi. Uh, and so, ding! Yeah. <laughs> and so, and. <laughs> <laughs> to conclude, just to conclude, um, I think we've been blessed with wānanga that will get us to this conscious space of let's get excited, let's reflect, 
where we need to move to the next stage of let's just do the action now. Let's start thinking strategically as a as a roe and then just get in and do the ma'i. We do have Ngāti Maru who's been going hard and doing working bees, <laughs> which is a beautiful space to be in because that's only something that's happened recently. Um, but Kapoi. as a roe, let's get it whānau. <laughs> Kia ora. Kia ora. Raise your hand, Fano. Anyone else like to speak? Kia ora, Fano. My name's Lorena Hoyt, darling. Um, I'm born and bred right here in Waitara. Um, I'd just like to say for us as Rangatahi, I think for us is um, getting back to our people. I think we need to bring our people home. We need to give them a reason to come home. Um, as for me, I, I think for me and my generation was to come back to our um, kaumatua and, and ask our kaumatua our questions. Um, I also follow Christ Puno. Puna. Love you all day. Um, but yeah, I think we need to come back to um, loving and caring and all that first, change these things in our lives that, that are going wrong. I'm also a mother of 11. I have 12 muhos, um, all here in Waitara. Um, so yeah, I think it's about um, bringing back the love bringing back the kindness, bringing back um, what really works in our families. And, um, and I think coming back to our people and asking our kaumatua, uh, the real questions and the answers, I think they're only going to come from their hearts. I think that's where it comes from. Um, well, that's where it came from for me, aunt. Um, my babies are still here. They're still being taught by the likes of Dame Marita. <laughs> Um, and learning lots. They're just missing that, um, that, that connection of um, wanting to be there, eh? And, and which makes us wanting to come. Um, I see over the last couple of days, and there was heaps of us, and then there's down to just a few of us, and soon there'll be none of us, eh? You know? I think it needs to come down to what makes us come together, eh, Damon? And I think it's all about fun, eh? I think it's all about the, um, the loving, the giving, the sharing, the stories. Um, bring our babies back, you know, like I say, I've got 11 and not one of them are here, you know, and yet we all live here in Waitara. Mm. I don't know, I, I just, I need something missing, and I believe that's where it is for me. Kia ora. Kapoi whanau. We'll just have uh, one, one last response, because uh, I think we've got a wonderful panel over here that we could ask in Partai as well, so kapoi. Enga mana, enga rau, enga rorangi tērā mā, o te ati au, o Taranaki whānui, tēnā koutu, tēnā koutu, tēnā koutu katoa. Um, my name's uh, David Williams, I'm of uh, Ngāti Pākehā iwi, um, and, um, and there was a wero to Pākehā uh, from one of the speakers tonight, and this whole kaupapa of the Putaki o Tiriri uh, is a wero to Pākehā as well. So it would be remiss if there was not a single park hour that spoke tonight, so I thought I'd better, <laughs> I'd better get up. <laughs> because it's, it is no use, as been said many times, it's no use Māori keeping on compromising um, if uh, there's not some park hour response to the compromise. Um, and so there was also a mention of the Treaty uh, Commitments uh, Unit, or whatever it's called, um, and uh, there were 7,000 commitments that have been made by the Crown in the various uh, settlements around the country over the last uh, couple of decades. Um, so it really is up to fellows like myself, uh, who've been in this game for a fairly long time, to try and hold the Crown to account. But let me just sort of, because one or two of you do know me, but most of you don't, I mean, I, I have been around the traps for a little while back, back in the day in Bastion Point and uh, Eva Rickard and the golf course and so on, and then I've become respectable and I give evidence in the Waitangi Tribunal and, and things like that. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, and I've always worked with Māori against the Crown. Always. Until just recently, and this is the problem that some of you talked about. Um, uh, and, and I found myself working inside the Crown, trying to help um, Kelvin Davis set up Te Arafiti, partly because of that kopapa of the 7,000 commitments that have been made. Are they just going to be ticked off? You know, oh yes, we've consulted with Te Atiawa, uh, 
uh, is it every November or is it every second November uh, to discuss whatever has happened in their settlement? Um, and so, um, anyway, I just thought you ought to know that there's a few of us Pākehā followers that we keep on turning up. Uh, I was in that house um, in uh, 1983, the year after the report, when Muldoon had rejected it um, initially, uh, and uh, a whole lot of us came here to say that the government should reconsider that rejection. It was partially successful. Um, uh, I had to sleep next door to Maturata, and sleeping next door to him is like sleeping next door to a volcano. <laughs> so, so you know, there are some of us that can keep, keep on coming back. I do want you to keep on telling us to do more and to try and get more Pākehā to get... We need to get more Pākehā to come. Mm. And if, if they come, you keep giving the messages you're giving. Kia ora koutou. Kia ora. Ka pai. Ka pai whānau. Auntie Chick. Pat. O tēnei, ko te matua nei hoki. You know, this, this nephew has allowed me tonight because normally he said, we're just about out of time, Mark. Yeah, auntie. <laughs> but... <laughs> I'll anyway, I have to do this. I'll start now. I, I really start. want to. <coughs> I really want to uh, me to the team and say thank you, thank you for all the kōrero and the inspiration that you have given us tonight. You know, there's those of us who are now in our seventies, and it's for me, it's about my mokopunas and the rangatahi that are coming through now, and you've expressed that tonight. I want to also mihi to our wahine to, wahine ka, wahine tino a ta ua. I won't forget about you, Will, because when I say uh, taku a ta Will, brings you up to the same level of our, of our wahine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, wa I really want to acknowledge and to say uh, this is my first day here because I've been away the weekend and coming and watching it on TV, I have felt that I've actually been a part of being here over these last few days. And I really want to acknowledge the team and all the work that has been put in to these few days here at Oa. Something that uh, the first time uh, for some of us have seen and probably will be the last time for some of us to see. But for our rangatahi and that coming through, I hope that this will continue. I love the, uh, the moaning up here. Uh, I love it because of the colours and the way it, it's woven. And all that kōri that we have seen tonight is part and parcel of that weaving that uh, is up there. So nō reira, kāra nō tātou, thank you one and all for uh, being here and sharing this afternoon. Kapati. Did I keep in time, Damon? Yeah, well, you are great. <laughs> For you, the, you win the prize. You get the prize, Auntie Chick. Get on my papo. I'll keep this as brief as I can, so I'll speak fast. Uh, my name is Tu. I'm Ngati, Kor um, Ngati Hoa. Good. And uh, if I sort of like name all my other hapus in the iwi, I'll be about 30 minutes past the three seconds. <laughs> um, I think that we keep... We need to keep moving and keep changing, no matter what we do. We've, done, we've tried to do a lot with our settlements. We wanted to bring our tamariki and our rangatahi back home, but they need something to come back home too. So we tried to set up training programs to try to get them into work. But then we need to change their attitudes because our rangatahi, they find the idea of getting into work is quite difficult because of all the changing times and te ahua tango te aonei. They have very short attention spans and so forth. So we had to keep working on those by changing attitudes of how to whakamana a tato tamariki mokopuna. And when we came here, our, our iwi, we felt immense pride to see the pride of our tamariki taiohi and kotene te mihi nui kamanu korehi 
ki te atiawa, ki a taramaki whanui tonu. E whakatu mai, ki a mātou, te mana, te wehi, me te puto te ihi, ki roto i o mātou manawa. We felt proud to be a part of this, and to our speakers, to our rangatira, to our maraikura, to everyone that's been part of this, we were proud to come and participate. So, kabutua ki rai rara, na te mea katai e au te tino whakaroa rai rau e tēnei. Kia ora. Ka pai, ka pai ngā te aua, a we te ni taipuru tu mā, a he mi mā, nā ko ngā te apakura, a hoki ko ararangi, nā ko hākopa hoki, e tako tō mai rā ki mere tapu, e te kāna me i atu kia koutou. Nō reira, e te wānau, we're going to now come to our panel. So, do you have any questions for the panel? Oh, 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 she's on the camera. Okay, but she's going to have a call or kapai, ngāneko, kayakoi. Kia ora rā. Kia ora rā e te iwi. Ahoi anō, ka tukumihi ki te kaupapa o te rā ki tāta katoa ko mata mai a kanohi a ngā mene mene. O te rā, ka tukumihi a tiki kautau e te takirima tapu o te pō. Hoi anō, ka whakapiti i rotu i te reo pāka, kia mohi o e tatou, taku pātai. Ok, so my question is, trying to make it short, as the older rangatai now I'm reaching around my 30s area, however, suicide, youth suicide, Drug addictions, alcoholism, um, for me personally, has been affecting my Fano, and yet I, I, I try to look to get support for us all um, through the small businesses, um, through the um, small support systems that we do have. However, um, I feel like because there's so many of us who are wanting to help each other, it becomes almost sort of like a big full bag with a little hole trying to go through one thing at a time. And I'm not going to ask for solutions, but I would like to hear some suggestions. So that's my wero kikoto te tokori matapu o te po. Yeah. Tēnā koe ngā neko, ka pai, nei rā ki te whenua. Ai, tēnā koe te taku tamā ene, ka rangarua. Yes, ko te mate o te manawa o te wairua, I think, oh, aroha mai. So, um, we as a family are uh, uh, the one or far known in Kate not on my te maanga o, o te kau oi ki konei. It's time to start talking about, um, honestly, about our feelings. And and for us as a far no, we're just starting to talk about te kau oi and uh, ko te mate uh, and, and it's time for us, um, especially with Uncle Hayden's recent um, wellbeing commission role um, that we start talking about it openly and share our mamai um, with everybody and our experiences. We don't have answers, but, you know, Te Kauhoe was a great communicator. He was a broadcaster, for goodness sakes, and you all knew him. He had a zest for life, um, fearless, and, and that, when he was at his darkest hour, was not a good combination. I think the influence of drugs in our commuti community is definitely something that iwi can play a role in, in terms of us making a statement with our mana motuhake and saying that is not something that we want um, in our roe. Uh, we need places of spiritual safety for us. I think ceremony is really important for us as Māori. Um, 
putaki o tiriri. I love ceremony. It's a good way for us to release our pain and for a lot of us still, our anger and our hurt. So I think we need to be creative as tiwi Māori and have some ceremonies around releasing pain. And if for our um, people who are in that space on and off um, of whakamomori and thoughts of suicide, that we create some ceremony um, to release, help release that hurt. Because we as a whānau would definitely be there and appreciate the opportunity to share that. Koina, koina noi ho taku kōrero, tēnei wā. Tātai anō. Kia ora koutou. Hey, I'm just going to ask this question on behalf of my daughter who asked me, as soon as we sat down, she asked, um, she said, my friend said to me today, Pākehā taught Māori how to build houses and wear clothes. So my question, and, and sh I know she really respects and um, looks up to, to you. She knows Te Waka and Puna, and she loves them and looks up to them and talks about them. So I'd really like to get you guys to respond to that because there is an underlying thought in what her, her young best friend said to her. Tilda, Tilda. A pai, pa tai, pai, te rā mo te tai ohi. Nā wai, nā wai te whakaut. A pai, kai a koe te waka. Kia ora, Tiana. Part of that is, is true. But part of that is also not true because our ancestors knew how to build whare and they also knew how to clothe themselves before the Pākehā came and, and arrived on our, on our doorstep. And so there's a truth to a certain type of clothing and a certain type of building that was introduced, but our people actually knew how to live here in Aotearoa before that was introduced. So um, you, because you wear both hats, the Pākehā and the Māori pōtai, you can claim both of those. Ka pai, whakau tu pai tērā te whānau. Ka pai tiana, you go tell your friend tomorrow, that same kōrero. You can still be friends after that. Okay whānau, now I know the time's getting on. So um, what we're going to do is uh, just I want to remind you about tomorrow's agenda because we, 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 we can continue this conversation tomorrow because uh, we've, got, we've got at least an hour tomorrow for closing comments and reflection time for us. That will start at 10 o'clock in Te Karoa, Maui. So if you're all here at 9.30, that'll make my job a lot easier. So 9.30 uh, a.m., we'd like you to, to be here, ready for our closing comments to start at 10. There will be a big hākari kai tomorrow at 11 o'clock. A big hākari kai just to finish off uh, our kaupapa, this wonderful kaupapa, te pūtake o te riri, ki taranaki, with uh, te hiki o te Māori at 12 o'clock and the handing of the Māori to Ngāti Maniopoto uh, for next year's commemorations. So that's, and then that will conclude uh, our putake o te riri ki taranaki. So that's, that's all, all for tomorrow. It's, um, you know, it'll be a, another wonderful day. It'll bring our, our few days together to a conclusion. So what I want to do now is just invite a whareoka to Wakakape to close our proceedings for today. Um, and then that will see us uh, on our way to get some rest. Put your hand up if you're up at 4.30 this morning. Four o'clock? No. Ka pai. Been a, been a long day for some of our whanau, so tēnā koutou. Kaya kaya whare oka nai nei. Tēnā koe. Tēnā koe, Damon. Uh, I te tūmā ki tēnā koe. Uh, tēnā koe uh, ngā, ngā hikoi ngā o Ngāti Haua ki runga o Mahoi Tahi te ata nei. Uh, te rā, te rā ua tanga mihi ana ki taku tuakana ki ana ru nāna ngā kōrero. Uh, I, I putaina... Uh, Mō tūpuna, mō kūtau tūpuna o tātou tūpuna e, e tahi e takatoa ana ki, ki māho i tahi e tahi e takatoa ana ki te, ki te warekara ki au mire tapu. E, anaru, 
uh, ngā ko te, ko te tuku te mauri ki a koutou ko, uh, hei, hei, hei te āpopo uh, e nga wakarite rite e hine tēnā koe hoki mai hoki mai ki tō kāinga ngā o tango te wā uh, he, well, uh, just, just, a, just a couple of comments I think um, um, you know that, that, that whole capturing of, of, of spiritual wairua you know we are a faith based people and our wakapono regardless of what our wakapono is we always had a strong wakapono and, and I still I sometimes fear that we're losing a little bit of that, and our wakapono is, is not connecting us. We were very, we were both altar boys as young men. This hato pete a boy, um, so, and, but you know, there's nothing more powerful than in community karakia. Nothing more powerful, and you know, um, we we, we as, as much as um, as Wurumu tries to not sing those hymns, they are ingrained. They are ingrained in us. Um, but you know, we, we uh, uh, what we saw in terms of Puna said about ceremony yesterday, that was communal. It just brought us together, locked us in. We all left the marae on Sunday night, like Puna said, not quite sure whether we were ready or not. But ceremony locked us in and made and elevated us and made us probably look a bit better than we actually thought we were. Um, so you know, ceremony is it's, and it, it, it's way to a that I, I fear, you know, I, I may to you, Spike, and what you're trying to do for our young people. You know, I, I, I had a real tohe about with myself about my Christianity and my taha wairua Māori, uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, what feeds your wairua, kai akwetera, but your wairua needs to be fed. When I go surfing, my wairua is fed. <laughs> it's my whare karakia, he wama, so find our... Find our, our place in terms of your wairua. We need to feed it. We need to look after it. We need to nurture it. And you all, can all come surfing with me. <laughs> um, the last comment I want to make is we, we, we hikoid those marae today. Uh, te kohia in the more early in the morning. Uh, mihi to my tuakana huani. He did a fabulous job of, of just binding us by the simple act of putting a rako in, a, in, in a, our ahika. Brought us together. I mihi my my tuakana anaru, um, who took us through the corridor or at Mahoi Tahi. Uh, to my tuakana Rawiri Toba, who challenged us leading into this kaupapa, um, but he led our corridor at Puketa Kawere. To my waine, Auntie Kura, um, at Pukerangi Ora, Anaru, who led our corridor, um, that, that helps to bind us even more. But you know what? My final comment do not. Let those pakanga of that time define those places. We lived on those places f for 1,800 to 1,000 years before those pakanga. We lived on those marae. They, were, they may be seen as urupa, wai, tapu, but we lived on those places. They were our places that nourished us. That period of our history is just that period. It doesn't define those places and it doesn't define us. And we draw inspiration from all that, all of that kōrero. And that's, the, the narrative is not so much about the land wars. The narrative is about all of that kōrero that we've lost pre the land wars. And that's a responsibility that we all have here. Whamā. Ki te roanga o te kaupapa o te, o mai te ata tū, tainoa ki te ata pō te nā koutou, te nā koutou, te kwatu ki te wahinga roana mana ki tanga e tau nei, ki runga i a tātou te wairo ngā mātua tūpuna. Nā rātou i waka takoutou te hara i koa ngā mātātou ngā uri, waka tōki o tātou ngā, o tātou ngā kau ki ngā tikanga, ngā tikanga e hara taku i a tātou. Ki a nā kau nui, ki te apa e a tātou mahi katoa i te tika, i te pono, Te aroa no te tehi ki te tehi me anui te rā e tehi wā. E rongo, waka iri ake ki runga ki a tīnā. Tīnā. Aumi e ui e. Taiki e. Pō mari e tōmai.
Te kurima ko o...